This is Teaching Kids Programming Part 4, and today with the kids we played a game. We used a Scratch programming environment to make a game, and then we played it. And that's the number one thing the kids have asked for is to make and play a game. So it was extremely exciting for them. And we did the game, we made the whole thing using just the basic concepts we talked about before variables and loops and conditionals. When you're making some program that's in any way complicated, like a game, what I like to do, and what really helps, is to draw out the logic of what you plan on doing. And you might draw it out in your head, but just go through what that whole thing looks like logically before you get started working on any code. So how would that work? We're making a game where Scratch the Cat is going to chase a couple of other sprites around the screen. When Scratch the Cat catches them, that little sprite will make a noise and it'll disappear from the screen. And after Scratch catches both of them, the game ends and it tells you how long it took to catch both of them, which is kind of like your score. So what does that look like in terms of logic? Well, we've got two separate, really three separate programs going on. One for Scratch the Cat and one for each of the sprites he'll, he'll be chasing. Start out with Scratch. Scratch is going to have, well the whole program is going to have two variables. One's a special variable called Timer. And Timer is basically what it sounds like. It's a special variable in Scratch that holds time as it passes. Second variable we're just going to call Done. And that's going to let us know when we catch both sprites. So it's going to start out equal to zero because that's what will, the state will be in when the program starts. So Scratch, to move him around, we are going to start a loop. And that loop is going to be listening for a key press, in this case, our arrows. So whenever our arrow keys are pressed, we're going to move Scratch in that direction. Then, when done equals two, in other words, we have captured both of them, we are going to do that fork in the road. If it's not equal to two, we keep on looping. If it is equal to two, we're going to stop and say how much the timer was that way the kids can keep score. They can see who did it faster. Let me tell you, there's no reflexes like second, third grade or reflexes. That's why I don't play PlayStation Online because I'll just get murdered by these kids. Some of these kids caught, caught the critter in like under 10 seconds, caught both of them. So that's what Scratch is gonna be doing. Our other little sprites are also gonna be going in their own loop. And what this loop is going to be doing is the sprite will be moving to a random place on the screen. Random is something we hadn't talked about before. It's a very important in programming, particularly in cryptography or hiding stuff. So we have a random movement of this person that Scratch is trying to catch. And it's just going to keep looping and moving randomly. And when it's caught, and here's our conditional. If it's not caught, of course, it keeps on going in this loop. If it is caught, it's going to make a noise, hide, and it's going to set done equal to plus one of whatever it was. So when you catch the first one, done will be equal to one. When you catch the second one, done will be equal to two. and then we'll stop the game and we know it's ended. That's logically how this whole thing works. So let's take a look at what the program does when it's running. Now, this will take me a while to finish because I do not have the reflexes of a young person. We're going to try to We're going to try to catch. Come here, unicorn. Okay, got, got one of them. Ah, 
The unicorn is fast. Ah, unicorn. I cannot emphasize how much better the kids were at this than I am. Unicorn. I might just have to hold still and hope the unicorn hits me. <laughs> All right. It took me 45 seconds to catch both of them. So that is essentially my score and the program ends. So what does that look like in Scratch? We have three different sprites and one is Scratch the Cat. And when it starts, it's going to set X and Y to zero. In other words, it's going to put Scratch in the middle of the screen. Then it'll say ready player one for four seconds to give the player a chance to get ready. Then after that goes, the game is started, the timer will set to zero, and we're going to set our done variable to zero at the very start. Now we'll have that, that loop, we're talking about going around, and it's listening for a key press of up, down, left, or right arrows, and when it, it sees that, it's going to change the X and Y position by five or negative five to go in any one of those four directions. If you want to make Scratch move faster, you increase that number and it'll move more spaces when an arrow key is pressed. In that loop, it's going to check the done variable. And when done equals two, it's going to play Scratch's meow, say you won in however many seconds the timer says, and then stop the game. So that's what Scratch is doing. Now our sprites, what they're doing when we start is the sprite will display itself. It'll move to a different corner of the screen. It'll wait for four seconds. And that's the same four seconds Scratch is saying ready player one. That way everything will start at the same time. Then it goes into its own loop. That loop says pick a random X location between negative 250 and 250 and a random Y location between negative 200 and 200 and glide there in one second. If you want the sprites to move slower, you could say glide there in two seconds and the sprite moves slower and make it easier to catch. And if it hits the edge of the screen, the sprite should bounce. See it going across the screen like that. If we change this to two seconds and we, we increase this time to make the sprites easier to to catch it was it's waiting four seconds now it's moving much slower and it's much easier to catch now if scratch touches uh, the sprite if the sprite is touching scratch the sprite hides it plays a sound and it increases done by one so when you've caught both of them done will be equal to equal to two and it'll hit this if done equals two and it will stop the game. And that's basically how that works. And one of the great things about teaching kids programming, it almost, programming is just kind of a side of it. What you're really teaching kids is a way to think about complex problems and break them into smaller logical steps. So the programming part is fun, but what's really cool is teaching these kids ways to think about problems in a clear, logical way and to solve those problems. And here we did it. We made a simple game and the kids had a great time. After we got done playing once, they of course had to change all the sprites in the background and make things faster and slower and do all kinds of different stuff. That's what we did this week. We played a simple game and uh, we had a great time. I hope you enjoyed that. And next week is Halloween, so we'll be taking uh, that programming day off. And then the following week, we will do something even more interesting that I haven't really thought of what it's going to be yet. Bye-bye.